Welcome to Palm Sunday. Now, go off, go and get your palm crosses and come back. Do press pause. I, I promise uh, I'll be here when you come back. Welcome back. Now, hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent to the disciples, saying, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a, to a colt that's never been ridden. Untie it, and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed, and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus. And after show, throwing their cloaks on the, on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Now you lift your palms so that I may bless them. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ into Jerusalem at Messiah, to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us the signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
celebration of all our hearts be acceptable to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As I said earlier, welcome to Palm Sunday, a second Palm Sunday in lockdown. Last year lockdown was new, scary, and we entered the Easter period in fear and trembling, uh, much like the disciples. Now we are a little less frightened perhaps, but still scared, a little bored, and perhaps more frustrated. We do, however, have the Easter promise of the vaccine. Today, on Easter, on Palm Sunday, we should be waving our palms through the streets of West Hackney cheerily. Instead, we sit at home and wave them at a camera. With equal cheerfulness, I hope. Rereading the short version of Jesus' triumphal entry, I was struck by the fact that people threw their coats and leafy branches on the road in front of the colt that Jesus was riding. There are various interpretations of why they did that. There are all sorts of historical and theological analyses of the fact that in early history, for example, the citizens of a besieged city or one that felt lost would throw down their coats and their clothes on an empty road so that a new God would come to save them. And people have said that clearly this is what they were doing. I prefer the more obvious and rather more gentle interpretation of what was happening because I don't believe, I'm afraid to say, the people of Jerusalem were well versed in their ancient theology and history. I prefer the more obvious interpretation. This was a cult that had never been written. Its hooves would have been soft and unscarred. The people of Jerusalem were just being kind. They were making the way easier for a young and possibly rather frightened and sore animal. I love the idea that Christ's arrival should instinctively provoke a spontaneous outpouring of compassion. We know that that compassion and those people will change within the week, and that is the way of crowds. But the compassion they demonstrate does herald a new way of doing things. I looked at the notes I made for last year's Palm Sunday lockdown sermon. One lockdown was fresh and strange, and I tried to find some joy in it, and I said this. Surprisingly, there are signs of change happening now some signs of the coming of the kingdom. The homeless are being housed, the vulnerable are being assisted, neighbours are becoming friends, society's heroes and heroines are cleaners, nurses, doctors, bus drivers, delivery drivers and post workers. We do not want to hear about the overpriced antics of Premier League footballers or celebrities. Will it all change when we enter the new normal? With God's help and our willpower, it will. Then we can sing Hosanna in a better world. That's what I said almost exactly a year ago, the first week of April. So looking back over the year, how much closer have we brought the kingdom of God? Many of the homeless were housed and fed to wonderful effect. The vulnerable, many of them did not do so well in our care homes at least. For me, neighbours have remained good friends and a source of great comfort. And while society at large has viewed the NHS and other frontline workers as heroes, the government has recently effectively cut their pay. But even in the Garden of Eden, there were serpents. 
I was very wrong about one thing. One overpriced Premier League footballer has behaved with consummate Christian grace and achieved more for the hungry and the lonely than a horde of saints. What have we done as a church? Well, by hosting North London Action for the Homeless, we have played a small part in the solution to some of the homelessness. I was talking to uh, Raymond and Lucy a few weeks ago, who run North London Action for the Homeless, and they were telling me that surprisingly, if you house the homeless in hotels and give them food cooked in our church, their mental and physical skills improve beyond all recognition and they can become independent. Who knew? North London Action for the Homeless and Aquaba have fed thousands and thousands of people over the year using our kitchen. We have fought tooth and nail to reopen our sex workers drop-in centre and we have managed it. How can we continue as a church, even when we don't meet in church, to bring the Kingdom of God here on earth? What can any of us do? Well, recently we became a victim of our own success. Through NLAH and Aquaba, over the years, we have fed so many people from the little kitchen in the church hall that our redoubtable old cooker went to glory. It practically cremated itself. But the week that happened, a kind parishioner, a distant and kind parishioner, phoned up Father Nile, who mentioned in passing the sad death of the cooker. That person, with the sort of spontaneous compassion that made the crowd throw their cloaks in front of Jesus, has offered to pick up the whole bill. That is a blessed relief, as with the church pretty much closed this year, we're in need of all the cash we can get. So, the Kingdom of God is achievable. It is, a, it is possible for remarkable things to happen here on earth, even in the middle of a pandemic, and perhaps especially in the middle of a pandemic. It simply requires us to think with a sort of extravagant compassion that Jesus showed us. We encounter Christian acts every day, everywhere we go. They should trigger within us the love that he promised. That is, the love that promised life and life in abundance. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have you nothing to do with that innocent man? For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? 
And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they met a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled him to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders were mocking him saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, the man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of, of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of our Lord.
My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. Let us pray. We pray for our Queen, Church of England, Archbishop and Bishop. We pray too for our clergy, Nile and Justin. Almighty God, call to proclaim your glory, bless them and keep them as they continue to provide our spiritual sustenance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, the body of Christ and community at St Paul's West Hackney. Bind us together by your love. Give us kindness, patience and humility to support each other and work together. Let the gift of your peace come into our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for the great gift of your creation. Bless and heal the world. Bring hope to the hopeless and unity where there is conflict. As our world begins to heal from the pandemic, we pray for your wisdom in all we do. Help us to receive this resurgence with a better appreciation for your wonderful gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we continue to acknowledge our sins and repent this Lent, we remember our Saviour Jesus Christ, who entered Jerusalem, sent to suffer death on the cross for mankind, that we should have victory, triumph and eternal life. Almighty Father, thank you for paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those unwell in mind, body or spirit. Loving God, let them know the strength of your might, that all things are possible through you. Let them not be fearful, but know your comfort. Walk through our homes, protect and heal us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed souls awaiting resurrection. We pray that we too may be granted a share in your eternal kingdom, knowing the promise that whoever believes in you, though they die, yet they shall live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we commend ourselves rejoicing in the company of St Paul and all the saints, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning, Church. My name is Max Bevan. When I was born, my Irish mother had planned to call me Mari Bridget, but I was so fat she said she couldn't do it and I was called Margaret. So now maybe you understand why I only answer to Mags. I grew up in Surrey um, in the aftermath of the war, was lucky enough <coughs> to attend grammar school and university at virtually no cost. Um, those days are now sadly gone. I studied sociology and subsequently did a postgraduate training in social work and um, I practiced that profession for, for 40 years, mostly, mostly in North London. I met my partner in Islington where he ran a hostel for black homeless youths and together with him worked to try and create a just a fairer society. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> we achieved anything. However, we did achieve a daughter who's now approaching 50, can you imagine? And um, she lives with her children in China. While at university, I was introduced to mountain climbing, um, which I enjoyed and continued after uni for a bit. Um, walking, traveling, history, reading, film, cultural activities, you name it, I enjoy it, really. Um, I started to work in the night shelter at St Paul's a good many moons ago, and through that was introduced to the community of the church. I was particularly um, attracted by the social activities, NLAH, all the various anonymous groups that met, the um, open door, so on. It was very much my sort of place and I've really enjoyed being a member of St Paul's since those quite far off days. Um, now to the chase, music. The piece of music I'd pick would be really anything from the early Bob Dylan, who was the soundtrack to my days at university and subsequently um, I loved him and I actually saw him when he was in, in, in England. A book is a very difficult thing to choose. I love reading so many books, but um, I've chosen The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver as it's a very good story and it's interestingly told and engaging on many levels. Film is The Tree of the Wooden Clogs, an Italian film beautiful but heartbreaking about the struggle for education of poor people before it was provided by the state and the cruelty of life's inequalities. <coughs> Person I would like to meet, it's very again difficult, there's so many people, how to choose between historical characters, family members, creative people, but I've plumped for Freya Stark. She was a traveller and a writer a very intrepid and fearless woman who was an early role model for me, although for many reasons I was never going to follow in her footsteps. Perhaps the greatest of those was my timidity, but I would love to be able to meet her and speak with her. What am I missing is people, really. Um, despite having friends who can organise Zoom meetings, WhatsApp chats, etc., and of course, most of all, I miss contact with my daughter and grandchildren who remain in China. Throughout her long time now in China, I've seen her at least once every six months and spent quite large chunks of time when she was um, having children, etc. So that's quite um, a big miss. <laughs> What am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward to being able to go to church again, meet all of you, um, have a cup of coffee, chat. I enjoy, um, I will enjoy being able to go to restaurants, to cafes, to theatres, to art galleries, so on. Um, but what I can say is that as soon as China will let me in, you won't see my back. I shall be on the plane going there. 
um, that's it. I hope that you will have a good week and keep safe. Bye. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.